Hey everyone, it's Lucid. Welcome back. We're hopping back into another game with Lemuria. It is Lord of the Flies, turn 51. And that puts us pretty squarely into early summer. And we have a message from Calum. He says, best of luck. And uh, yeah, so let's check this turn out. If you recall, at the end of last episode, we had announced our intentions to attack Calum. And then we had started attacking him. We did some raiding with uh, some of our Grand Lemurs and uh, our Wraith Lords, and we are, at the end of the turn, we moved a big army in. So let's see what happens. So Caitlyn is attacking me here, and I think I let him have it. So he's just moving normal troops. Nothing special. Um, and if you recall, a lot of these provinces, I just, I had my thugs in, and I just retreated out of. I didn't want to get them uh, cloud trapezed on by somebody who could kill them. If I knew this is what's coming in, I probably would have killed them. So this guy got soul vortex up before they hit him, and what that means is they're going to all rout and die. So there we go. Okay, so that was unsuccessful. Uh, meanwhile, we're attacking here with our wraith lord, Itimu, who is a huge badass. And this is not going to turn out very well for the bird people. And finally, Caelan is attacking me here. This is a counterattack. And he's moving a pretty big army here. So he's committed some mammoths. And mammoths, trample uh, is reduced by ethereal. But uh, because you can do lots of tramples a turn, mammoths are still going to kind of wreck ghosts. Um, and fortunately, our palisade is now finished, which we're very happy about. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, both here and here. So we're going to be putting up a fortress here, and we're going to be putting up a... Uh, we don't have the money, but we're going to put a fortress up here. I kind of want to get... I think I put a temple up there last turn. Yeah. Oh, did I get two temples up? I got it. I rebuilt my... I must have rebuilt my temple here and rebuilt it here because my temples are now at 15. And what that means is my dominion strength is now up to 10. So this is the first time in the game I've gotten it maxed out. And uh, at the same time as it went to 10, it also gave me my max amount of death gems per month. Very happy about that. Um, and I, I have this big army here, which was used to defend uh, against the potential attack, but we're gonna go ahead and move them uh, forward and put them on the offensive. So they're gonna come here um, this guy, I'm not really sure what he's doing. He doesn't have any pearls. So, I, I don't, anyway, he's kind of redundant in this army, really. I have this one dude casting darkness, and that's about it. Um, and I'm hoping, kind of, that this army with the mammoths comes and attacks me in the swamp. That would be pretty cool. Because I would crush him. I would just, I would wallop him. Um... But I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, meanwhile, we're going to come back and take this. I'm going to send in both these guys. Because this is a p pretty big group of dudes. And I don't totally know what's going to happen. Um, this would be the kind of thing he might try to choose to attack me now. Or he may wait another turn. I haven't broken his fort yet. So, not sure what he's going to do. Um, fortunately, I'm in friendly dominion. So my HP isn't total shit at the moment. Um, I do, I think I'm bringing, okay, so this lady is bringing some earth gems so that we can give them to this dude who can then put up Brain of Stones. Um, anything else? Uh, Itimu, we're going to leave the scout sieging this because I don't think he's going to, anybody inside is going to want to come out and fight Itimu. Uh, and we're going to try to take this. Meanwhile, um, we're going to send this guy, this is the other guy I empowered in earth. This is my console who won the... Uh, tournament some time ago, so he has a lot of experienced stars and is um, has a heroic ability. So he has uh, two attack and defense, I believe, from the heroic ability. And uh, yeah, he's going to be hard to kill. So he's going to do basically the same thing. Stone skin, blessing. I don't know if blessing is actually the right script. Probably better to do that later. Temper flesh, unholy protection, unholy power, maybe blessing at the end. Yeah. 
something like this. He might not f f be able to take it. Like, ideally, I would put Itimu back, but I don't know. There's a good shot he will. Uh, we do see there is an Aura of Wisdom. I forget exactly what those are. There's maybe one of the special summons. Um, and then I know the Yadas, I think, are summons. And then there's a Sea Troll, which is the Water Summon. So we'll see. There's a lot in there. We're going to basically be preparing for a battle here. Um, in terms of the messages to Kazador, the fortress is unharmed. We need more men to breach it. That's here. And then the other one was... We've started to destroy the fort in uh, Friga. The walls are moderately damaged, so it's probably around 50% damage. So I've got one or two more turns. Uh, but basically, we're going to raid, raid, raid. We need our money, and this is how we're going to get it. Um, this guy's sneaking and attacking here. We have a big army moving here. This guy is attacking the province he's in, right here. Um, and I do, one thing I'm thinking about when I'm doing all this is I'm trying to get paths for the provinces I'm raiding back to my territory. So like I own this. So if I take this and this, I can trace a path for all these back in here. Um, and that's another reason why I want to double down here because if I attack this and I'm successful, but let's say they, were, they kept an army here on the throne, um, then I, I definitely want to take this because I'm kind of risking the income of this province also. Um, I'm also attacking here, which combined with this one, I'll be able to trace this one back. Um, even if they take the scout, like, yeah. So anyway, I have kind of two routes to trace income back, potentially, if I keep this scout on top. Um, okay, what else? We are doing, this guy is doing a move and patrol here. Really, he's just moving into position. Um bringing a lot of death gems so that he can potentially cast some other stuff. He's got uh, an air random, so he's probably going to be doing Wailing Winds. Uh, though I think he's set up for Wind of Death right now, but we'll see. Where, where the hell is he moving? Okay, oh, this is important. I've got another guy set up to Wind of Death cast. He's coming here. Um, and he's going to do Wind of Death twice and then retreat. And there's a good reason why we're going to do that. And that's because there's two places I think this army will go. Either this army is going to expect I attack here and they move, or they're going to come here. And I think they're probably going to move here. Now, if we look at it, Kalem does not have great magic resistance. 10 is pretty bad. I mean, it's kind of normal, but it's kind of bad. And then these guys have 5, which is pretty bad. And then their commanders are a little better with like 14, but they're not great. Some of them only have 10. Or I think those might have been uh, bodyguards, but um, nothing to write home about. Two winds of death is going to kind of destroy this army. So anyway, I've got just enough guys to protect him, I think, uh, for him to get both those casts off and then retreat. And then the guys will kind of, they're an offering to kill this army. So that's basically it. We're going to try to get some of these armies off the table. We're going to prepare, prepare for a huge fight here. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So let's go ahead and hop to the next turn. Next turn, turn 52. Um, Ryla apparently is talking to Midgard about cooperating, and he assumes that's against me but he's not quite sure. Uh, anyway, he this is the new player who's taken over Midgard, and so he's talking about all the stuff he has to do. He's got unforted shamans, unresearched, uh, unsearched lands, and he needs to get his Corpse Construct factory going, so he's working on that diligently. And Corpse Constructs kind of wreck me, because uh, they have that uh, charged body, which will kind of zap my ghost pretty good, so... And they're not affected by things like rigor mortis and other stuff. Um, okay, so let's start watching these battles. So indeed, Kalem did attack me. This was this little province right outside my main base where I have my Wind of Death trap. And we can see we already got a lot of them with the first cast. And the second cast got almost everyone.
He may die, though. I don't think he's going to be able to retreat unless these guys route, which doesn't look like he's going to be able to get out in time. Yeah, he's he's done. But uh, unfortunately for Kalem, I believe he is done also because the battle is about to end and then watch them all die. There we go. That is the Wind of Death Trap. And uh, let's see if we've got anything else. Got a battle here. This is my big army moving into the swamp. There's just a little PD. Here, Kalem is pinging my big army with a group. I don't think this is going to be enough to cause gem usage. Um, and it's not. They just, they retreat, actually. So, I think he was trying to cause gym usage and see what my scripts were. Uh, okay, we're attacking Kalem. Now, reanimator's not normally that good, but we kill them so fast, we actually get quite a little undead horde here. Look at that. Was that this one? Yeah. And next, we have a battle in the Farron Mountains, as our raiding continues. This were actually, we had moved two people in expecting him to keep. Uh, potentially a big army here, and this is a death three site, so we, we really do want to keep this province, but there's only one PD, so we're going to murder that. And we're raiding here. This is about 10 PD with heavy calf, which will not be a problem once we have invulnerability up. Invulnerability plus astral shield will really make it you're pretty damn immune, especially with soul vortex. Like, you're basically immune to normal units. And finally, our, we're trying to take this from... Um, this is Kalem's cap. So we're trying to just peek our head in and see what he's got on top. Okay, we've routed a lot of them. We've still got 30 HP. We've got a good shot at this. Okay, somebody just did... Oh no, we did a lot of damage. Six. Okay, so they're still getting some pretty big hits through. Uh, my fatigue is kind of high, too. I think I had him scripted to cast spells uh, instead of... Yeah, flying shards is not what we want to do here, because we don't have uh, soul vortex, so our fatigue got a little too high, and we get critical hitted to death. It's unfortunate. So he dies. Uh, not worth it. Would not do that again. Okay, people are wise and are leaving our provinces. Very, very smart people in this group. The ones that fled. Um, air gems. Okay, and the walls are moderately damaged. I think I've got one more turn until I pop him, but we'll see. Uh, these guys are waiting. That's actually a mistake. I should have had them on hide. Um, and I gave this guy some of the earth gems, though. Let's see, did I actually have him rain of stones? I did, okay. So we've got this big army here. We're gonna go ahead and move them in, finish the job, uh, because while Kalem won this, he won this at huge cost uh, with Winds of Death being quite effective. Um, and so yeah, this army's gonna run in here. And uh, I think this was the guy I moved in a turn or two ago. Because uh, I had moved two death, uh, death air mages up this way. One of them to do the wind of death trap here. The other one uh, was going to swing in later. And this guy, because I'm now moving him with my army and I don't want to wind of death them. Uh, right now he's going to do skeletal legion, which actually is pretty good against Kalem, who tends to have lances. Um, but uh, potentially later he will do uh, wailing winds. And that's basically it. We're still waiting to have a big battle here whenever Kalen wants to come try to kick us off. We are going to move Itimu on top of the cap uh, and try to pin that in. 
Um, the good thing here too is I potentially, if the if we have a battle here and I keep, I'm also moving a big army here that's going to be doing uh, darkness with skeletal legion. Those are the big big spells that are coming out. And do I have anti magic coming up too? No. Um, and that's because I have one scout on top, so it's highly likely that Caleb's going to send something out to try to clear this. Uh, potentially something big, so I'm bringing in casters, and I've got a pretty sizable army. I think this will be able to kill a medium-sized army, but, you know, he's got another turn here. One thing he could do, this would be kind of a Jedi move where he'd have to be reading my mind, but he could send almost all this stuff to clear off this fort, and this would that would just totally annihilate this medium-sized army. Uh, and then the turn after, he would be in a good position to potentially fight me here. Um, but we'll see. Um, so that's basically it. Also, since he did not do uh, normal attacks against me, we are going to continue raiding. We're going to raid with these guys out here. I'm going to leave this guy behind because I want to keep this uh, this site, or this province that has the three death income. So he's going to sit behind and just summon allies um, while these guys continue raiding. Um, yeah, and that's basically it for this turn. Um, in terms of research, we haven't flashed that up in a while. Uh, we had hit Alteration 6, which gave us Darkness, and then um, Conjuration. We're going to run up to Conjuration 8 and try to put down Well of Misery. It'll also help us a lot with our magic diversity, so that is one of the things we're going to be doing. And I think that's it for this turn. Let's go ahead and hop another turn in. Was that turn 52? I think it was. Let's double check. That was. So, okay, we're on to turn 53. Turn 53. Um, okay, so there's a battle in Kalem. This is our Wraith Lord. So this is the same thing that our console failed against, and I think we are going to see the power of Soul Vortex. Okay, go ahead and get Soul Vortex up. Okay, he's mostly just cast or attacking. I would really like him to cast some spells. Come on, buddy. Okay, there we go. So Vortex, right there. And he's going to pop back up to full HP. And we are going to eat up all these trolls. Chop, 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 and we're back up to full HP. Okay. Not sure why these guys are frozen. I think they might be fatigued out, but why, I'm not totally sure. They're not cold-blooded or anything. I guess just standing around, the uh, the cold penalty got them. Not totally sure. Okay, we caught this guy. Turn him into a little undead giant. Unfortunately, you do not get to keep them. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, next, we have a battle here where we are raiding with our Grand Lemur, and one PD, we should be able to kill that. Here we're moving our big army in, and he's got a nice little squad here. So, oh, um, I believe the battle before this turn, we had killed all the commanders. All the commanders died from Wind of Death, or they retreated, so uh, there were no commanders left on the battlefield, I think. Um, and because of that... Uh, his army was trapped here, so when we had a battle, his troops were just in a blob, and he was unable to get them out. And he didn't put any PD, so what happened was they routed. Um, if he had put one PD, so it was actually smart of him to not put PD, because if he put one, then there would have been a commander, and they wouldn't have routed. Um, yeah. But uh, it turns out, because I cut off all his retreat routes, that that was not a good thing. Um, but normally it would be. Okay, wait, that was this one. Okay, this was that battle where he retreated. And I believe that brings us to this province, which is another raid with my Grand Lemur. And I think we know how this is going to go. Yeah, 
And then we have a battle in Friga. Holy shit. Okay, so this is... Uh, he's bringing everything and the kitchen sink. Uh, if we take a look at his army, he's got a Banefire King. Or a King of Banefires that is well kitted. Chainmail of Displacement. Um, yeah. Yeah, it gives a mirror image, but I don't see any mirror images. But anyway. Um, some reinvigoration. Shadow Brand, which is pretty good. It's got a rather large area of effect, so this will kill lots and lots of little ghosts. Uh, it doesn't affect inanimate, but it should affect ghosts, because ghosts are not inanimate. Uh, and then he's got a Banefire Strike. This guy is just going to be killing a ton of my little ghosts. That's quite annoying. And he's probably going to put up Phoenix Pyre, I guess. Which will be even more annoying. Um, and he's got a ton of troops. Within there, these little black ones, I think... Yeah, these ones are uh, mages, so they can be doing dust to dust. And he's got quite a good bit of them. Like, this is like a whole line of mages here. Um, and then in the back, we've got the Lightning Bolt Mages. So he's got the Death Mages in the front, the Lightning Bolt Mages in the back, with a Queen of Air Elementals here, who is also a Prophet. Which I love uh, Profiting these guys, because they can zap around the map with Cloud Trapeze uh, and claim thrones for you really quickly. They're also flying, so they can move around pretty quickly when uh, not Cloud Trapezed, or Cloud Trapezing. So yeah, it's a pretty... Pretty sizable little army. I'm expecting he's gonna do storm and then fog warriors or something, or storm and um, wrathful skies. We'll see what he actually puts up. Uh, and then I've got my dudes. Uh, these guys are gonna charge forward in a in an immediate attack to pull hopefully a lot of evocation off of these guys in the back. These guys are on hold and attack rear. These guys are on attack rear. And uh, we've got some consoles up here who are gonna be trying to convert people. And we've got. Uh, the big spellcasters in the back. One thing I didn't think about, but it's a big weakness here, is uh, if he has attack rear, they could fly over everything and kind of snipe my guys in the back, so I probably should have put them a little farther forward with more guard commanders. But anyway, let's take a look. And this will be the last episode for this turn. Our last turn for this episode. Okay, so I've got, we'll take a quick look. Darkness, uh, and then Rigor Mortis up. He's got... I can't, I can't tell if I got, uh, did I do... I don't think I've got it yet, no. I'm gonna be doing Stygian Rains, but I don't have it yet. We have Wind of Death coming out. You can kind of watch, okay, so... Uh, that was the addition of... Oh, natural rain. So I think that means I now have protection versus mundane 15. That's from um, that's from Stygian rains and a lot of thunderstrike coming out. A lot of thunderstrike. You would think this is wrathful, wrathful skies, but it's really just a ton of thunderstrikes. Kind of what my battle with Midgard looked like, but it's much less accurate because. Uh, I do have darkness up. So that means he's not going to be hitting the densest part of my troops. Uh, unfortunately, so he did cast um, Fog Warriors. Um, these guys also have invulnerability versus mundane, but I don't have any mundane weapons anywhere. Um, I don't know if I got... Did I get skeleton? I did get skeletal legion up too, and that gave me my pierce resistance. Um, my queen, though, is back here, and I think she's gonna die. She's surrounded by Kalem people. So are these Grand Lemurs, so they're in trouble. Um, we do have Wailing Winds, but I think my queen cast it, and so I think she's gonna die and we're gonna lose it, but we'll see. And I think she cast Rigor Mortis also. She cast some of my really important stuff, and she's really vulnerable to attack rear here in the back. Okay, so Darkness went down, because I think they got my queen. Rigor Mortis is up, though. Rigor Mortis must have been cast by some other dude. So that was unfortunate. I did not want my queen to die. But Rigor Mortis is important because I think these guys are very close to getting fatigued out. We're at 74, so they probably have two more volleys in the max. Yeah, they're going to start... Half of them are fatigued out already. But, uh, yeah. And 
this this group was my first little group that ran forward. These guys in the back have been getting hammered by evocations, uh, and then also by this Banefire King. But uh, but yeah, they a lot of my army is still uh, up and around. And if we look at it, I've gotten most of his army fatigued out now. Uh, but this Banefire King is not affected, right? He is only 16 fatigue, because he's I think he's undead. Um, which is unfortunate. And he just kills anything that gets close to him. Yeah, he's just murdering all those things. Um, meanwhile, this army is kind of pushing in, and because most of these guys are fatigued out, we're about to kill his mage core. Yeah, they're about to get murdered. The Banefire King is surrounded, but okay, he just... Wait, whoops. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I just, like, here, I'm going to pause it, and we're going to zap back to where we were. Okay, we're about back to where we were. Uh, this guy's surrounded. If we look at him, uh, he's pretty strong, but he's still taking damage. His protection is not super high. It's 19. Um, and I've got a fair number of dudes around him. So they don't care about the ethereal part, so they'll kind of go through him. He does have Banefire Shield, so... Uh, and he has Vine Shield, which does seem to... Okay, it's procking some. But he's still taking damage. It could be from my mages, too. No, he's getting hit a, a fair amount. Okay, so he just died. For those of you who've never seen Phoenix Pyre, look at that. Uh, did a ton of damage, killed a ton of my troops, right? He died, and then upon dying, he pops up back here. Now, when he pops up, uh, he took some fatigue from dying. So here he is. And uh, this guy alone would be a huge pain in the butt to try to kill. Uh, but what you'll see is he's now very close to my priest, so hopefully we can convert him. Because you see uh, Unholy Command is starting to come out. Meanwhile, we are continuing to chew through uh, this Mage core over here, who are all totally paralyzed. If they weren't paralyzed, let's be clear, I would have lost. <laughs> uh, because they would have just dealt so much damage. But the King of Banefires is now fully um, surrounded, which is good, and we are trying to convert him. I mean, uh, Unholy Command is really hard to use. It's a very short range spell. It's range five, so they could only, these guys could cast it five squares away, so like out to here. So it's very lucky he teleported close to them. And uh, yeah, normally you don't, you don't really see it getting used very much, but hopefully they will do it and then take him out. And yeah, I th have we gotten him yet? Let's go ahead and turn on Team Colored Squares. We have not. He's light blue. I'm purple. So it's hard to tell, but he is not. Okay, we just got him. I think. Oh, no, we didn't. Okay. I've not gotten him yet. Uh, this mage core is now dead, and we're moving on to the back one. Still not converted. And yeah, they're basically, all their mages are just getting completely slaughtered right now. And we've got this guy. You can see it's purple, so he is now on our side. Pretty damn useful. So now it's just a matter of mopping these guys up. And there we go, a victory. Decisive, but uh, hard-won victory. 
Uh, we have killed all of his stuff. Um, I think we surrounded the province too, so everything that retreated also died, but only a couple units managed to retreat, like one of these guys. So if you count all the mages, we killed 18, uh, like 25, 40, uh, we killed 90, yeah, like 95 mages, and one of them, importantly, a, probably the best one we converted. Um, so the King of Banefires is now ours. We lost two of our Grand Lemurs, we lost three of our Shadow Tribunes, we lost our Queen, uh, and a Woodhinge Druid. This one, I shouldn't have lost, he's just standing there, he should have uh, been hiding, but anyway, that was a mistake I made. And he had a lot of gems on him, so he was actually an expensive loss. And then I lost a lot of troops, I lost about 450. Um, but it's good I brought 900, because I you can see we are getting kind of close to the point where my guys could have routed. Like if I had 200 less, I probably would have routed. And then I would have lost this battle. Um, so very, very important I won that. So I, I'd kind of committed everything. And uh, yeah, that was a very, very important and decisive win against Calum. And it will hopefully allow me to conquer him very quickly now. Uh, we raid successfully here. Where is this? Right here. Okay. Um, I think I had split off a small contingent of this group to come right up here. Um, this group is going to kind of move in this way. Um, this dude is going to come and try to take uh, right on top of this fort and pin what army he has inside in there. And uh, we did. he did not take the bait, and he did not attack me on top of this fort, which I was holding with the scout, which I was a bit surprised with. Um... But what we're going to do is set up another little bait. We're going to leave one guy on top, and then we're going to move these guys on top of this fort. And that will hopefully allow us to pin more troops inside and shut down more production. And I think that's about it. Uh, raiding will continue. We're going to raid here with this guy. Uh, I'm, I'm not very worried about... I mean, I've got these guys moving in to help protect it if there's a light raid, but... Um, which actually may be a bad idea, because if he attacked with like 60 of these spire horns here, which is kind of his normal raiding squad, like 60 spire horns would slaughter all these guys, and I would lose them all. So, not sure if this was a good move, but I think mostly it's getting them in position to siege one of these. Um, so we're going to be attacking this, we're going to be attacking this. Um, Itimu was successful, he's just going to sit on top of their cap. I'm going to shut down capital-only mages. Uh, both their production and then hopefully them getting out of the fort. They can still cloud trap these out pretty easily. Uh, and he's still got Gale Gate up, so he definitely has air gems. Um, but yeah. The other thing is, uh, this fort, Friga. So they're repairing the walls faster than I can repair them. And I've got... I think when I got that message, like 100 were up here. So I've got about 120 troops here. So he must have at least 300 troops inside. Um, or yeah, at least 100 troops inside. So there will be a big battle whenever we try to go inside this fort. But we will have that when we get there. Hopefully it will not have as much mage support. Because I think 90 mages is probably most of his mages. I doubt he has 180 but we will be ready if he does. Um, we also got some cool items. These We got a Shadow Brand. Uh, we got uh, Earth Boots, which is quite nice. And we got a Bottle of Living Water and a Water Bracelet. We got another Water Bracelet, bracelet and an Amulet of Anti-Magic, which we're going to put on this guy since he has Water Paths. Um, but these ones we're going to get out, and we put the King of Banefires on him. And we're going to escort the King of Banefires back to my capital. Um... Once he gets to my capital, uh, we're going to be casting... Uh, I made a pit stop at Thaumaturgy 5, and the reason is because that will give me Gift of Reason. And I will cast Gift of Reason on the King of Banefires, and he will then... Because right now you can see he is a creep, or a normal unit, not a commander. So when we cast Gift of Reason, he will pop back to being a commander, and we'll get his uh, magic paths back, which uh, I would like. Um... Yeah, this will be especially useful. Oh, oh, he can't go on water, underwater. That's annoying. I wonder if he can with gear. We'll have to check. It'll be pretty helpful if I come to attack Ryla. Um, 
Whereas he, you could imagine him slaughtering uh, just squads and squads and squads of uh, of chaff. Anything else? Uh, the thing is, he could get enslaved, so I'll have to get his magic resistance up to like 30 if I'm going to use him against Ryla, which, especially for undead units, is totally possible. You can give them lead shields and um, cast uh, unholy protection on them, as well as some other things that will make him uh, get very close to 30 magic resistance, which... Uh, verse minor, um, enslave casting, like if he's got four people casting it, that would be fine, but if he's got like a whole army of people casting it, that would not be good. Um, so that is the plan. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, nope, we're basically moving in a ton of troops. I've got uh, a big army... So, okay, this is what I currently have there. You hit T to see what's currently in. And if you want to see all the troops that are converging on a province, you hit Y, and it will show you everybody coming into the province. And this is a really good way, if you're doing a multi-headed attack, to coordinate multiple armies. So, again, it's Y to, uh, to see that. So you can see we're bringing in a lot of reinforcements uh, because I need to crack this wall. And right now they're repairing it faster than I'm tearing it down, even with everything in there. So uh, I thought about pulling this army in, but I would much rather have this army be sieging and locking down forts um, so that it's going to be more difficult for him to defend this. This army, however, is going to come in. Um, and they're going to be bringing death gems, which we're a little out of at the point at this point. Um, and we're going to be bringing, obviously, more troops, which we need. So, yeah, that's basically it. We're putting up another temple here. Um, that will put us at 16, so... Uh, this is now more for Dom spread than anything else. Um, but yeah, that's it. You can see our income is just through the roof. Um, I, so this is going to be a really long episode. I'm going to go ahead and just show you score graphs, and we'll get close to an even 40, and we'll call it. Provinces, you can see this is the whole fight with Midgard, and it was not a very good thing for us. This is when uh, we kind of hit a power spike, and we started fighting on the island. And we had that critical victory against Midgard here. And so things kind of were getting better. Uh, but then we kind of stalled out uh, and lost this big battle with Midgard here. And we've been level. And then this was deciding to attack Caleb. So this is another way to confirm that indeed you're doing the right thing when you see your province graph going up. And this was in some ways an indication we were doing the wrong thing. Um, but I'm not actually sure it was wrong. We, didn't, we don't want to get ganged up on as Lemuria, and there's no other way to prevent people from ganging up on you than attacking the strongest nation in the game. So uh, that actually did a good thing. It, it retarded probably the best, strongest nation in the game from being very powerful, and uh, kept us from getting ganged up on. So might have been an okay strategy, but it certainly wasn't uh, making us more powerful. Forts, income, uh, we got down and or we got kind of high and then of course our population all died uh, and then the war with Midgard we had some rating where we got little peaks but um, and then here you can see the war with Kalem giving us huge amounts of income gym income has been a steady climb upwards and research we've been climbing pretty good we're probably lowest in research this one's only rel important to look at relative to other nations Dominion, you can see we're climbing up. I never know what this... It's always, like, weird on the, the last turn. But anyway, we're making good strides in Dominion. Army size. Um, continuing its growth upwards. You can see major battles on here. Uh, this was that big fight we lost. Here was the big fight we won. Uh, here are some other big fights. This was a big fight we won. But this was against Kalem. And then Ascension points... You can see Caleb's actually got a lot, which they're all going to be mine. And uh, I don't have many. I've just got one. So one thing we can tell from this is as I take Caleb's throne, I will be probably the number one ascension point person. So diplomacy will be a little bit harder. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed that uh, battle with Caleb. We will probably have some more to come, though I think uh, it is a little bit downhill sailing now with Caleb at least. Though, um, we probably are going to have some issues over here with uh, Ryla and Utgard as the game continues. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.